Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us here for Crime 2 News First at 4. I'm Whitney Ward. Tonight we are continuing our Boomtown series where we explore the rapid growth impacting the Inland Northwest. Spokane Public Schools breaking ground on a new South Hill Middle School today. Our own Ian Smay is live at that groundbreaking with more on additional construction within the district. Ian? Yeah, Whitney, the school district is breaking ground on the Carla Pepperzak Middle School here on the South Hill, and it started just a couple of minutes ago. And this is one of the last major projects currently planned by the district, and it is one of four new middle schools under construction for reconstruction or just new middle schools in general. The school is expected to be done with the construction on Carla Pepperzak in the fall of 2023, which is also when it will open. That's also when the Sacagawea Middle School rebuild is expected to be finished and open. Before that, two middle schools on the north side of Spokane are scheduled to open this coming fall. Those are Pauline Flett Middle School in the northwest part of town and Denny Yasahara Middle School in the northeast part of town. Spokane Public Schools Chief Operations Officer Sean Jordan said the district had a few reasons for adding new middle schools. We had an interest to reduce class size, um, primarily at the elementary level, and so we were going to need more elementary size uh, elementary classrooms. And uh, in, in that process, we're also growing uh, at that particular time. And so uh, the interest in order to move the sixth grade to middle school, we were gonna need more middle school space. These construction projects were funded by bonds passed by voters in 2018. This also comes as SPS underwent redistricting, redistricting rather, as they add the new schools into the mix. Coming up at 5 and 6 tonight, I'll have more about when these projects are expected to be done and how the district will decide what students will attend these schools. For now, reporting in South Spokane, Ian Smay, Creme 2 News. All right, Ian, thank you very much. And we would like you to join us for a Creme 2 News special, Boomtown's Spokane's Growth. So make sure and tune in Friday at 3 p.m. as we give you an inside look at some of the major projects that are underway in Spokane and explore what the city's growth really means for the future of housing and transportation. That is Friday at 3 o'clock right here on Creme 2. And certainly another sign of spring construction always is, but so oh, is yeah. a thunderstorm and we're getting a little taste of that today. I know how cool is this? I'm so excited. It's <laughs> like uh, a big day in my world. The okay. first thunderstorms of the season and yesterday Mark said, well, how do you know it's spring? And this for me, this is it. This is it. OK, yeah. Take a look at these clouds. So first starters, uh, what you're looking at is fair weather cumulus, but look at kind of the left hand side of your screen. Do you see over there where the anemometer is spinning? If you look behind it, oh, those clouds are starting to tower. That's a sign of some of the energy in the atmosphere, and the energy comes from a combination of things. One of those things is the heat down at the surface. We're up over 50 degrees in Spokane and Coeur d'Alene, close to it up in Sandpoint, and temps hovering in the mid to upper 50s out in central Washington. That heat near the ground is a stark contrast to the cold air moving in overhead. Basically, we have a cold front sweeping the region, so what's winding up happening is that stark difference between the relatively warm ground and the very cold air overhead means that anything that starts to spark a little excitement in the atmosphere causes these storms to grow rapidly and tower high into the sky. That's some of those same cumulus clouds now just packing a little more energy. So if you look, you can see a couple of bolts of lightning showing up. Some of those south of St. Mary's, a couple of those up near Hayden now and those cells are not severe, but you could see some heavy rain, maybe hear a rumble of thunder and those early signs of spring. Those will continue basically until the sun goes down. Once that happens, we lose that energy, that diurnal heating, that afternoon heat that's helping to spark some of these storms. So overnight, expect things to wind down tomorrow morning. It's a few lingering snow showers. That's right, snow showers up high because of the cold front sweeping the region. And then tomorrow it is all about the sunshine. Wind will wind down as well. So basically the gusty wind and those thunderstorms, well, those will continue until the sun sets tonight. All right, sounds good. Thank you very much, Jeremy. And the Gonzaga men's basketball team gearing up to take on Georgia State in Portland. Fans are making plans right now to follow the team on the road to the championship. One super fan actually already has her flight booked for New Orleans for the finals. She says now the Zags just have to meet her there. Thousands of Zags fans traveling to Las Vegas to support the men's and women's basketball team in the WCC tournaments. That was last week. And one of those fans in the stands was Ari Nordhagen. For her, being a Gonzaga basketball super fan comes 
comes with the territory of living in Spokane. She is originally actually from California, but kind of adopted the Zags as her home team. She says there's no feeling like actually watching a game in person with other fellow Zag fans, and that's why she's getting ready to head to Portland. Probably going to take the six hour drive to Portland and watch them play the two games over there. And when we found out that uh, New Orleans was a destination for the finals, uh, we already booked our tickets. So we have like hotel rooms booked, we have plane tickets booked. So we just need to make, make sure that they make it there too. <laughs> there the Zags will have to beat Georgia State on Thursday and then further themselves in the tournament after that of course Portland will also be hosting three other first round tournament games the city is looking forward to traveling fans though to help boost the economy over the weekend and Brenna Green and Travis Green have arrived in Portland for the NCAA tournament and they bring us some good news about a pair of Gonzaga players hey guys Hey there, yeah, uh, some good news. Welcome to Portland, I should say, first yes. off. Yeah. But some good news for Gonzaga already as we just got here. Yeah, both Drew Timmy and Chet Holmgren named second team AP All-Americans. Uh, this is Timmy's second straight year being named uh, a second team AP All-American. Meanwhile, of course, this is Chet's first time making the team, of course, because he's a freshman. Timmy and Holmgren were beat out by Kentucky forward Oscar to Oscar Toshibwe and Illinois center Coffee Cockburn for first team honors. Another uh, new honor for Chet coming in later today. He was named a finalist for the Naismith Defensive Player of the Year. And meanwhile, turning our attention back here in Portland for the NCAA tournament, if Gonzaga and Boise State both win their matchups on Thursday, that would set up a Mark Few and Leon Rice matchup, which would be Few's first time facing a former assistant in the NCAA tournament. But let's not get too ahead of ourselves yeah, yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's it's been an incredible year for Gonzaga, former Gonzaga assistants as a whole, as also Tommy Lloyd in the NCAA tournament as well. Yeah, and it actually goes beyond that as Dan Munson, the head coach of Gonzaga in 1999 where this all pretty much started yeah, that big run his Long Beach State team was just one point away from also making the big dance all four of those head coaches won or I guess I should include Mark Few in that so all four of those head coaches won their conference their regular season conference championship this year and they were all in Vegas last week so I caught up with all of them about the success that they're having we follow each other really close. Uh, you know, Gonzaga's is expected, but the rest of us mere mortals along the way grinded it out this year, and it was really a fun year for all of us. Brothers, that's how Dan Munson described the coaching tree that has sprouted out of Gonzaga. They all met at Dan's dad's basketball camp at the University of Oregon as counselors in their 20s. You know, it's guys that you can count on, and, uh, you know, to have those kind of guys in your life for not five, not 10, not 20 years, but 34, 35 years. We've, we've all been really, really tied. And uh, so th that's pretty special. We know how lucky we are to have each other in this, in this business. I'm the, like the little brother in the group. You know, I was with those guys for all of them for a long time. And, you know, they're all kind of similar age, you know, and I was here, you know, 15 years younger or so. So um, yeah, they've been, they've been great mentors to me. And, and, and more than that, I mean, our families are all, you know, really close and you're talking vacations and birthdays and weddings, whatever, ever. I mean, we, we do all that stuff together. The little brother of the group was the one who sent out the text last Tuesday night in Las Vegas to see if the four of them could meet up. In the midst of the craziness of March, the quartet found a way. It was a, a good hour where we could just put our teams away and uh, you know, the first the first thing Tommy said to me when he hugged me, he says, who, who are you guys playing? I go, we're not starting there. <laughs> I said, I, said I, don't, we're not, I don't care who you play or who I care. Let's enjoy what we've done. And then we'll, and then <laughs> half hour from now, we'll talk about what we got this week. <laughs> it was just great to connect and, you know, talk about what we all have been through to this point. Just have some laughs and, and get to see each other. So it was really a really special night. Mark Few did arrive a bit late to that meeting due to a complimentary bath his team gave him after winning the WCC championship. And his brothers do. They couldn't help but get a joke off at his expense. We had to give Mark a little grief when he came because he was the only one who didn't get coach of the year out of the four of us. Um, because, he, you know, we said, you know, should we let you even sit here? 
<laughs> now that's a Dan Munson right there, no doubt. I did a spit take when Dan said that. So funny uh, getting to talk to both of them in Vegas, especially Leon and Dan. They just had so many stories to tell. It was so much fun. I did talk to Mark about potentially playing Leon as I decide I want to look like the Lion King here in Portland. <laughs> um, uh, and he said, you know, it'd be tough because he always roots for his guys this time of year, but that's just the breaks and, and you got to win or go home. Just how it goes. Mm -hmm. Hey, speaking of, we're going to have more exclusive content just like that right here on Crim 2 as we're going to be here in Portland all week. Yep. So make sure you stick around with us here on Crim 2. From now in Portland, I'm Travis Green. She's Brenna Green, Crim 2 Sports. Thank you so much, guys. And in case you didn't already know, Gonzaga will take on Georgia State University in Portland on Thursday. And yes, Creme 2 will be there at the game as the Zags kick off that NCAA championship run. Tip-off is at 1.15. You can watch it on TNT. And the Zags not the only team looking to make a postseason run. The Washington State men's basketball team headed to the postseason. This is for the first time since 2012. The Cougs did earn a number four seed in the National Invitation Tournament, NIT. The Cougs will host Santa Clara at Beasley Coliseum. That's tonight. Tip-off is at 8 o'clock. And as Gonzaga gets ready to make its 23rd consecutive NCAA tournament run, we're getting you ready for the big game. Again, sports director Brenna Green and Travis Green are live in Portland. They'll have a Bulldog Madness special right here on Creme 2 tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. Spokane traffic cops are back. While they were gone, injury crashes went up 70%. We were able to get those patrol staffing numbers back up to a point that I could get my unit back. Why the Spokane Police Department says the streets will soon be safe again, coming up after the break.